I'm tired. I feel like I haven't really gotten much of a break yet and this worries me because we aren't even in the thick of the pandemic in our country but I'm already tired just from the normal hours that doctors usually work. Having worked in the public health care sector for the past nine years and knowing how limited we are in terms of human resources and actual resources, I think people would be as scared as I am if they could see what's happening and if they could see that we may not be able to cope with the numbers. Hi now. Hi mom, how are you? Fantastic. Couldn't be better. So you know how you know the drill goes that uh, every time you go on a shift. I go on my knees in my altar and really just put you to God for, for strength. I'm not good at not being anxious or nervous or stressed. I'm quite a worrier, I worry quite a lot. When I'm anxious, I speak to my mom and she always says that there's no point in being anxious or stressed because at the end of the day, it's not up to us. It's up to God and he'll basically carry us through. Growing up and even now, I feel like the black sheep of the family when it comes to my faith because my mom's always been a very religious and spiritual person. But for me, it was always a bit more difficult because I didn't feel like it came as naturally. I thought that it was easier to be a doctor and try to save the world because that just came to me easier than it did with, you know, praying my religion, my spirituality. I'm not really those people who I envy when it comes to their faith in that, you know, every single day it's, it's a quote from the Bible. But with me, it's a little bit more difficult. I sometimes forget to pray altogether. I don't go to church every single Sunday. I feel like I'm in a better space than I was when I was younger when it comes to my faith and that I'm embracing it more, but I think that there's still more that I can do. I currently work at a public hospital. So in South Africa, if you are specializing, you work at a public healthcare facility. I've never wanted to work in private. I feel that our people need me and need us in public health care more than ever. But I know how overwhelmed the public health care system is already. We may not be able to ventilate people, put them in ICU, isolate people. There was a lot of anxiety and fear around what was going to happen, particularly for us healthcare workers. I can't even begin to like tell you how terrified all of us were. We have wards sometimes of up to 30 patients with no privacy or curtains or any kind of barriers in between them. We have beds with no linen and no pillows. I know in one of the hospitals I worked at, it took 26 hours for some patients just to be seen by a doctor and casualty. So there have been some incidents where patients have died in the, in the waiting lines to be seen. So, I mean, if that's happening on a normal day, on a normal call, then we were just thinking about what would happen if COVID hit and hit as hard as it could have hit. I'm on call today at work. The numbers of positive cases are rising quite significantly with 19 people at work who have it. So we're short staffed today. We're getting more and more patients with it now also. We've had a few babies even though they haven't been as sick as adults. Their moms who brought them in have been very sick and they themselves required us to actually send them to casualty for admission. We're all taking a bit of strain and working harder than we usually do, as hard as we work already. Um, and I only think it's gonna get worse from here. During COVID, parents aren't allowed to stay with the children. So we have a lot of kids who are admitted and the parents have to leave them uh, basically the entrance to the ward. So it's quite scary being in hospital as a child, especially when you don't know anyone. And I think it was even made worse because of the fact that we were all wearing, you know, these huge hazmat suits and these visors and these masks. When kids would cry in the COVID cubicles or in the COVID wards, we weren't able to pick them up and comfort them. 
we'd have to leave them in their cubicles and they'd basically have to self-soothe. So that really broke my heart. So currently South Africa has the third highest number of new daily cases in the entire world, which is really scary. What's even scarier is that at the hospital, we're seeing more and more children with it. It's really easy to infect other children and other mothers, which is actually what has happened in our wards. But we have a lot of staff members who have been booked off because they've been COVID positive. And it's becoming really difficult for those of us who are still at work because we now have to pick up extra shifts and work extra hours. And it's exhausting. I think everyone's tired and everyone's scared and anxious right now. It's just become really serious now in South Africa. We have a lot of deaths also. It's just not looking good. It's really scary what's happening here. I had an absolutely terrible call last night. Um, besides the fact that so many nurses didn't come to work because of them being sick and COVID positive, there was also a taxi strike and taxis are basically the main source of transportation that a lot of our nurses use. Because of the taxi strike, nurses didn't come to work and because of that, we were very short staffed in our pediatric ICU, which led to a lot of babies not doing very well and a few children dying. There was about one nurse to 12 patients. One patient was actually found dead in his cot because of the fact that the nurses were so busy and were unable to monitor all of the children. I had to basically run around from ward to ward trying to make plans for the babies and begging the nursing staff to please just take one or two more patients. It was really, really difficult. I'm really, really tired. Um, physically, emotionally, I'm exhausted just from basically trying to keep the morale up, trying to keep babies alive, and obviously I couldn't do it all because we did lose some children and it's it's heartbreaking. Yeah, that was a really, really bad call. Like a terrible one. We were all over the place. We were being called in different directions because people were discovering that this baby's sick, that this baby's not breathing. You don't even have time to eat sometimes. You don't even have time to go to the toilet. I think the most heartbreaking thing is you don't even have time to talk to some of the parents properly whose babies are that sick, just to give them all the information they need to know. Because you just need to be everywhere, um, all the time. I mean, I think helpless is like the perfect word to describe it, because as much as I tried to do everything and tried to be everywhere, it just wasn't possible. When things got really, really hectic at work, I really wouldn't think about praying because I'd be more focused on what's happening now and here in front of me with the patients. Praying wasn't an option at that time. I, I don't even think it crossed my mind. It was just to try and be there for all the babies as far as I could. So I'm quite an anxious person and possibly something that made me pull away from my faith and spirituality before was during times of heightened anxiety when I would speak to my mother and she would basically tell me to give it to God and pray about it. And I would find that sometimes very frustrating because I think being a doctor and knowing what brings about anxiety and what can treat anxiety, it would be a little bit frustrating to me to be told to pray things away. And I think also that's possibly where I could have incorporated faith into health because I don't think that they need to be mutually exclusive but I think that maybe incorporating them into one another or bringing them together could have resulted in less anxiety and couldn't could have resulted in some healing um, but I mean at the time it wasn't easy to see that and you know it did upset me to kind of be told by my mom just just to pray the anxiety away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn off my video okay. and it, it will be more of a conversation between the two of you. And occasionally I'll, I'll chime in and then I'm going to have you two speak to each other about prayer. And even though the relationship you two have around prayer is complicated, the, the prayer she modeled meant something to you. 
Does that sound good? Yeah, I'm probably going to cry. Hi, Belle. Hi, Mom. How are you? Fantastic. But it'll be better. That's good. So, Mom, basically, you're going to watch two videos now from my video diaries. The one is a really, really bad call that I had at work. And then the second video is of me on leave. It was really, really difficult. I'm really, really tired. Um, physically, emotionally, I'm exhausted. Just from basically trying to keep the morale up, trying to keep babies alive. And obviously I couldn't do it all because we did lose some children and it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, Nell, you know, I just couldn't stop listening to to your breathing as much as your face looks like you're fine. Um, but your breathing tells a much more bigger story of somebody who is uh, hurt, who is um, exhausted, as you say. But I do believe that as, as your mom, um, we, we have the strength of, of elephants. In all of this, we trust God because you're still standing. How are you feeling now? It was a bad day and, yeah, just to hear your words after watching that, just, it just makes me a bit emotional. I can imagine because at the time, when the chips are down, we all have to bring it on and, and, and appear to be strong for ourselves and um, so that we can get by. You know, I hate crying. Like, I hate crying. You don't have to stop yourself from crying from these situations. Bottom line is that, mm, is that work has to be done and we also at the same time have to feel the pain. And it's, it's normal. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. I'm gonna show the second video now. So I'm currently on leave. I've pretty much just been sleeping the whole time. Absolutely exhausted. Dreading going back, which will be in about a week's time. I find now that I have a little bit more time in my hands, I pray much more. I think maybe before I was just so tired and things weren't as bad. So sometimes I would forget, but I find now that going to bed for me means praying before sleeping and praying before I get up in the morning. I always used to kind of laugh with my sisters about how much my mom used to pray when we were growing up and you know if it was really necessary to pray as much as she did but now it seems like I'm turning into her and it's happening to me a bit more as my faith is being strengthened by what's happening around me and by what I'm seeing. It's like the story of um, a farmer who, who plants the seeds of goodness <laughs> on good ground uh, and it takes forever to come out. I am just forever grateful to God that, you know, those seeds are starting to show. I'm still praying that you don't just pray when you go to bed <laughs> and, and when you get up, but that alone is huge. It's something, it's something. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot. I am incredibly proud of you now. Um, for uh, personally, for just the, the young woman that you have just um, become and proud that you have remained very committed to serving our country. I know of many occasions I have suggested that you go to private. <laughs> but you just said, Mom, all I want is to serve public. Private people can take care of themselves. I need to be here. This is where my calling is. And I am incredibly proud of that. Yeah, Mom, I think it's because of you. It's because of your prayers. I think your prayers have brought me this far and, you know, have kept me going for this long and have basically made me who I am today. Wow. I think it's a dream of every parent to hear what I'm, I'm hearing. And praying for you has been just one of those things that it's so fulfilling. 
you know what's interesting to me? You said to me, I think it was in 2020, you said that I have a feeling 2021 is going to be your year when it comes to, you know, prayer and God and spirituality and all that stuff. So I still remember that. And it's actually quite interesting um, that you said that because I guess now we're here. Thanks, mom. Love you. Okay, you know, bye, bye. Bye, mom. Love you. Yeah, love you too. See ya.